<laughs> hey, Kevin, uh, down 18 points in that first half. Just seemed like in that third quarter, is just a, a more juice out there. What, what would you attribute that that spark that we saw to? Definitely play harder to start the, the quarter. Um, we kept the ball in our hands, you know, and they came out too relaxed, you know, being up 16. Uh, on the shorthand of the team, you could tell they relaxed a bit, and we was able to capitalize on that and take the momentum back and put it in our favor. And uh, guys hit big shots. Bruce Brown was incredible tonight, man. Jeez. Floaters with Timely, you know, planning the pick and roll, picking up full court. You know, I'm just so proud of that dude, man. He, he's a true pro. Man, hasn't played at all. And coming to the starting lineup and making an impact, you know, guys like, you know, Tori and Karras, you know, the whole bench came in and gave us some great minutes, man. We're going to need that going forward. Who you passed Elgin Baylor, Dwayne Wade, and Adrian Danley on the NBA's all-time scoring list tonight. I know you're in the midst of the NBA journey of the season, but how much are you able to, you know, appreciate and enjoy these accomplishments along the way? <clears throat> um, it's, uh, it's definitely great to be in that, that – uh, that category, that class of scores, you know, so many great players that played in this league, and it's always been my goal to be amongst the best and, um, and to experience what those guys experience. So, you know, Dwayne Wade is a guy I played against and admired for so long. And you said Elgin Baylor, right? Who else? Who else? Adrian Daly, too. Elgin Baylor and Adrian, Adrian Daly. Three, Daly tonight too. three guys that I've followed and – researched and did so much work on and, you know, emulated at certain points in my career. Those three guys are Hall of Fame players. And, you know, so to be able to pass them on the list is pretty cool. Greg Logan with Newsday. Hey, Kevin. Uh, how important was a win like this emotionally under the circumstances where there's a lot of uncertainty surrounding when Kyrie is going to be back and <coughs> as we're coming off a tough loss. So what does a, a game like this say about you guys and, and how much was it just needed to, to give you a lift? Well, it was definitely needed, especially after a bad loss last game and, you know, especially starting off bad, <clears throat> down 16, 18 in the first half. Um, and, you know, you, you're seeing guys have pride and they want to come out and compete. And everybody came with it tonight, and you know, especially in that second half. I mean, we just slowed down, stopped thinking so much, and – and cover for each other, and we was able to get a good win. Alex Schiffer with The Athletic. Hey Kevin, you, you talked about being down 18 and 16 in the first half. Just what, what, were your problem, what, what, what did you think your guys' offensive issues were in the first half? Um, they got loose. They made shots. You know, they got in the pick and roll and made some tough ones. You know, I think, I think that whole first half, they just, you know, their talent – uh, and shot making really, really stood out. Uh, Monte Morris hit a couple threes. Um, Millsap hit a couple threes. Jokic, you know what he does. And then Will Barton coming in and knocking down threes for him. I mean, I think, I think in the first half, everybody was – the offense was free-flowing. Everybody was moving freely. But once we started to be more physical, I think it slowed down. Brian Lewis with the New York Post. Hey, Kevin, what uh, – Steve, after the game, said he thought you guys needed this for your soul. Uh, I'm curious, what was his message at halftime after that first half defense? And if he really wasn't the one that was delivering anything uh, in the locker room, I mean, who did speak up in the locker room at halftime? Steve was the only voice um, at half. Um, he walked us through everything that we need to do in the second half on film. Uh, encouraged us, told us it's a long game and keep fighting, keep playing. And through in the second half, he was just he coached us every possession. It felt like, and um, you know, guys responded. Uh, I mean, you, like like you said, we're gonna go through adversity. We're gonna be down big, but um, it doesn't matter how you respond. And guys did well tonight. Malika Andrews with ESPN. Evan Bruce Brown credits you. You credit Bruce Brown. I know you've been hesitant to say you want every game to be you wanted every game to be a building block but when you're able to turn it on like this are you are you ready to feel back do you feel like you've achieved that yet who me me individually yes you uh, you individually uh i don't even know what that means <laughs> being back i feel like uh i feel like i've been in a good groove and 
knocking down shots. Um, I mean, I feel good, man. I, I can't really pinpoint and tell you I'm back. I don't want to have one of them I'm back moments, but I'm just I just feel good and healthy and good. I was uh, you know glad I was able to get through to this game tonight, playing 35 minutes, 36 minutes, and 38 minutes the last game. You know, so. I feel like my health is there. That's the most important thing for me. That's the only only thing I'm focusing on. How I play, you know, I know how I know how to approach the game, and I know what I need to do out there. Um, so I'm just more so gauging my 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 body and you know all intangibles, <clears throat> intangibles of the game. Are you going? Are you planning on? I know you said you wanted to work up to it. Are you going to play in the back to back tomorrow? I plan on it. Yeah. Christian Winfield with the New York Daily News. Hey, Kevin, I got two for you here. One, um, you were close to a triple-double. I'm wondering if you were, A, if you knew that you were you were one rebound shy. Bruce kind of said he, he stole a rebound or two by accident, and maybe that was one of the reasons why he didn't get him. Um, second, uh, I'm just curious, how much of your rehab time did you spend on passing out of double teams, or was that something that you were able to work on in rehab when you were getting to that point? And does this time without Kyrie, allow you to kind of sharpen that iron since the defense doesn't have another star to respect them. Yeah, uh, I did know that I was close to a triple-double. I mean, they put all our stats up there at this, on the on the Jumbotron, so I knew. Um, and I, w- I, I really didn't think about getting the triple-double, to be honest. I wish I would have got that last rebound, <laughs> um, but it's all good uh, as long as we are rebounding them as a team. And I did not work on traps and that's made uh, and it, as I was rehabbing, that's probably why I turned the ball over so much. But uh, I'm, I'm getting used to it um, again. And, um, you know, and tonight was one of those games where I didn't mind turning the ball over. I think just being aggressive and going downhill and trying to make something happen, <clears throat> especially after being down so many points, I could live with those. But uh, I'll get better at, with traps and, you know, being sharper with the ball as the season goes along. Rachel Nichols with ESPN. Hey, Kevin, we're doing a project celebrating Kobe Bryant's life, and you've been um, really heartfelt in talking about him. I know you've talked about him as an Olympic teammate, but I'm just curious, what was it like the first time you played against him? What do you remember from that night? It was a preseason game. I'm not even going to count that one. Uh, I mean, he, he he's had like 20 straight points on us in that game. But the first game, uh, the regular season, we played against um, the Lakers. They came to, uh, I told the story before, they came to Seattle on a back-to-back. And he had probably 44 shots and had 48 points and hit the game winner and didn't say a word the whole game. And his approach um, to that, his approach to that season, because they started out that season without Powell, without that championship right. team that they were building, and he was just stone faced, straight killer mode the whole game. And, you know, that's, that's one of those moments I'll never forget. What impression did it leave on you? Because was there a point during the first five minutes when you were like, I'm on the court with Kobe Bryant? <clears throat> yeah, just how he moved. I tried to emulate um, how he moved down to what he said to, the, to you guys in the media, to how he worked out before the games, what he watched. I was really tried to study it as much as possible. I would never told him that. Um, <laughs> But as a as a younger player, I was really was just copying everything he did. Thank you. All right. Brian Mahoney with the Associated Press. <clears throat> hey, Kevin. Uh, obviously, you guys are missing a lot of firepower with with Kyrie out in that that one spot there. Um, you talk to to Bruce uh, at all about hey, you know, don't worry about your offense, or do you tell him we do need your offense? He was a little surprised about how much scoring he did at the end. We, were you surprised at all about that? No. I don't tell guys how to play. Um, they're in the NBA for a reason. They work to this point for it, uh, to get to this point. Um, and I just try to encourage as much as possible. Uh, his own coach trusted him to be the starting point guard tonight. And he came out there and, and really controlled the offense, man. Two turnovers, six rebounds, three assists, three blocks, eight of 11, efficient. Um, I think he did a great job, and you know, nobody really told him anything. He just played his game. And last question, we'll go to Cassidy Hubbard with ESPN. Hey, Kevin, I just wanted to know how you found out about the new health and safety protocols um, the league announced today, and did it feel different in the locker room or post-game because there's no <laughs> hugging allowed? 
Yeah, uh, we get a text. Um, I think each player is on his text. We all get a text from the MBPA, and they they outlined everything for us. And um, um, we, I, I felt like we were under those protocols anyway. Guys are sitting far away from each other on the bench, all fist bumps. Guys have masks on already, and most of the guys on the team don't leave their houses. So um, I feel like we were already in that protocol, and hopefully these cases start to clear up around the league, and these put these games. Uh, you know, get back to playing. I've seen Boston and another team uh, postpone another game. So hopefully we clear this up. Thanks so much, Kevin. We All appreciate right. it. All right.